Hey Jigsaw Pals, it's me, it's Monique, and I'm here for a puzzle vlog today. I hope you guys are excited. We're gonna do a little bit of speed puzzling practice, but I'm also gonna update you on my abandoned series puzzle that I've been working on for almost two weeks. So far, it's been like the hardest puzzle I've worked on to this day. It is, I just have no idea what I'm looking at at every single little piece. I mean, I find like a little cat face here, but there's three cats. <laughs> in the whole puzzle. So there's really not a lot to distinguish in the whole picture. I'll show you a little bit more about that. And then I'm really excited to see how fast I can do this puzzle. It is my Aladdin 300 piece puzzle. So let's get into it. Meow, meow. <laughs> He's like, what the hell are you doing to me? <laughs> I saw you excited, Najee. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, let's do it. As you see, I have organized every single piece by shape. The most abundant shape is this one right here, the standard two out, two in. And then the most, the least amount of shapes I think is the X pattern, which I have underneath right there and the square pattern. So everything is organized by shape because like I said, I have organized as much as I could when it comes to the print. So I'll show you how much progress is actually done underneath because that's as much as I can go understanding which puzzle pieces I'm actually looking at. Like when you look at this, you know you're looking at the rug, right? When you look at this, you kind of, I mean, it's a little bit harder. I mean, those stairs definitely kind of mimic up here, which you wouldn't think it does until you look up really close into it. Like that, I'm telling y'all, I thought one of these, these two pieces were part of the stairs over here. So we started cracking into that last night and I got a good amount of the stairs done too. Cute little cat, but like, where's the cat body? Like, why can't I find that body? <laughs> why can't I find that body? <laughs> so dumb. Um, and then we finished the chandelier here in the corners. So anything that it has is stick stands out as like an illustration has almost completely been applied. We've got both. We've got the doves. We have all the cats out. There's one of them in here. There's that one right there. Um, and I think there's like a little dormouse right here. And then somewhere over here, there's another cat. So that is why this puzzle is so difficult and I'm still struggling to get through it, but we actually have gotten through a good amount, I wanna say, and I genuinely think that this is gonna be the best strategy because Karen puzzles, I rely on her puzzle strategies a lot because she's just a brilliant speed puzzler and puzzler in the US in general um, on YouTube. So I like to use those techniques which really have helped me in the past, which, specifically is this. Now, it might not be that helpful right now because there's so many of these pieces, right? But I'm still at the place where I can pick out all of like the brown-ish pieces if I want to, which is pretty much how I was able to start doing the stairs. And then same thing over here, I want to be able to kind of pick out maybe all of those browns, maybe the greens um, to get the floral, like the greenery done in the abandoned puzzle. But as you can see, and I kind of explained this when I was introducing these puzzles to y'all in the beginning, this greenery here can easily be that greenery. This greenery down here can easily be that greenery. So that is what's making this puzzle so difficult, making it more reliable on the pieces, I think is the good way to go at this point so far. And I think we're gonna get there. Um, hopefully by the end of the week, we'll definitely finish it by the end of the month, but I wanna try to finish this puzzle by the end of the week because I wanna start another thousand piece puzzle before the end of the month. So that is my progress update on the abandoned series. Wish me luck all. And if you have any advice, please let me know down in the comments. I am more than happy to take on any advice that can help me get through these more difficult puzzles. Here's the puzzle, 300 pieces. This brand is Seiko. I introduced it, I believe, either a video or two ago. 
you watch my old videos, you'll know that I introduced this one as my second speed puzzle practice. All right, let's do this. I think this one's going to be easier than the Alice in Wonderland one, so I hope I can finish it <sighs> at least in an hour, under an hour. That's my goal. Let's do it. I said it. Under an hour. Jeannie, make my wish come true. I don't know if anybody saw that at the time lapse when I opened up the bag. All of the pieces just went <laughs> and luckily none of them are on the floor. A couple of them did fly on the floor, but I'm an hour into this puzzle and I'm almost done. I think I did a really good job. It was very chaotic in the beginning. I didn't have a strategy. I just started doing the puzzle, which means that I started with my natural strategy, meaning that I went for do the borders. But then I was like, wait, don't do the borders. Start flipping everything over. So I started flipping everything over and I was like, wait, you gotta start sorting now. Wait, you see some pieces, start putting them together. Oh my gosh, speed puzzling is so freaking stressful. And it's mainly because there's so many strategies that you have to know when to implement them. And I think that's why I'm struggling to just get these puzzles done faster. Not that that's necessarily, you know, I'm not trying to rush through this. I'm just trying to increase my speed puzzle time because one day I do want to compete with Jeff. So here we are in one hour. What do you guys think? I think I did a pretty good job. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can finish this within the next hour. So hopefully I'm gonna do it in two hours. I didn't make my goal of one hour, but I did shave off at least 30 minutes from my old other speed puzzling practice as long as I can finish this under two hours. There's not that many pieces left. As you can see, it's mainly like the fireworks and stuff like that, which just needs to kind of fill in these spaces and I'll be done. Okay, let's go. Let's keep doing it. We're doing great. Jeannie, can we do it? Can we do it? Yes, we can. Oh, and no, that he still has his uh, cuffs on. And I was like, hmm, this is technically a picture of all of them afterwards, or is it? Because Jafar is still in the picture. So I guess technically he still hasn't been freed by Alan yet. That's who, what he calls Aladdin, if you guys haven't watched the first one. He calls him Al. Um, I think I said Alan, but he calls him Al, <laughs> and his name is Aladdin. And so, yeah, I don't think Al has set him free yet. Okay, y'all, let's get into it. We're almost done. Boop, 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 boop. So let's chat. I have officially finished the puzzle under two hours. I'm impressed with myself because I'm telling you that's 30 minutes less than it took me to do the other puzzle, 
Whether or not this one's more difficult or not, um, I would say this one was definitely less difficult. Uh, there is a lot more distinguishing colors that I can get through, a lot more organized um, by color and stuff like that, rather than just one big blob of like the garden. So I think it was a really good puzzling experience. However, I'm starting to realize there's a reason why people hide puzzles from people before a puzzle competition starts. What I'm learning is that if you have the time to look at the puzzle first, A, you can kind of memorize what the puzzle looks like and kind of what you would strategize ahead of time one by one. Because if I would have looked at this box and would have started with it, I would have known where to start. I would have known what I'm looking at. Like I had to hold the box a couple of times, which I'm sure people end up doing at the end, even if they did know what puzzle they were gonna do. Some puzzle competitions do unreleased puzzles. Some competitions do released puzzles. So it just depends on the competition that you're in. Now, this one, no competitions are 300 pieces that I know of. Most of them run at 500 pieces. So knowing that in the future, when I tackle these puzzles again, my goal is to have a more strategic approach to it so I know where I wanna begin, how I want to organize the pieces, and what I wanna build out first. Because A, I should have been holding the box a little bit more. There was times where I was getting just stuck and I could have just looked at the box to see what I was looking at on the piece. And I kind of was just being a little stubborn at this, but at the same time, um, I just forgot that I was practicing speed puzzling. So that's another thing. I'm in my home, I'm comfortable. Um, in a competition setting, I'm sure that adrenaline is rushing through. So your brain is just processing what it's looking at a lot quicker. And because of that, I feel like there were definitely times where I was like, oh wait, I'm supposed to be trying to like go as fast as I can. <laughs> And you definitely saw that at the end when everything started coming together and I was just like, all right, that's that piece, that's that piece, that's this piece. I was holding onto the box and it went by a lot faster. So I definitely have a lot of room for improvement to do, um, but it's been a lot of fun to continue practicing speed puzzling. I don't know when I'll ever do a speed puzzle competition. We might be like 50 years old in 20 years doing that. But as of right now, this is a fun way that I like to increase my skill when it comes to puzzling because it is a skill. You do get better at it. You get better at matching pieces, at recognizing just patterns. Um, it's almost like remembering, you know that one game where it's like mix and match and all the cards are like faced forward and then you flip one and you flip the other and if it's a match it matches if not then you have to flip it back over and then find and then flip another card and then if that one is one of those cards then you remember that's the card that you had so and then you flip that one over and it's a match so i feel like that's how puzzling is and you get better at that you get better at developing that skill so thank you so much for joining me today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I make new puzzle videos every Monday. Every once in a while, I'll take a week off. Like last week, I took a week off, which is just really nice to be able to separate myself from the analytics and stuff like that. Because when I post videos, I get really excited about who's viewing, how many views are coming through. And the more videos that I post, I kind of start to get a little bit too addicted to checking those numbers. So it's good for me every once in a while to take a week off, which was last week. So thank you again for joining me today. Um, if you love puzzle content, again, follow, subscribe. Um, my Instagram handle is at Mooncraft Media. I don't post very much over there right now. And I also post other content here as well. So check that out wherever you are in time and space. I hope you are having a good one and I'll catch you on the flip side, bye.